You are so good. You are so faithful, Lord. You are so wonderful. You are so glorious. You are beautiful in all your ways. Rock of ages, there is no one like you. Lion of the tribe of Judah, we worship your majesty. We praise your holy name. Adonai, you are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. You are the Alpha and you are the Omega, the beginning and the end. What a mighty God we serve. What a great God. What an awesome God. What a glorious God, beautiful in all his ways, too marvelous for what. We worship him, we praise him, we thank him. Beloved, we serve a living God. We serve a faithful God. We serve a covenant-keeping God. We serve a reliable God. We serve a dependable God. We serve an unshakable God. We serve a miraculous God. We serve an everlasting God. We serve a God that is always right. A perfect God. A holy God. A glorious God. Bright and morning star. We worship His majesty. There is no one like Him. Beloved. Of a truth, he is God, and there is no other. We worship him, we appreciate him. He is the all-wise God, our ever-present help in time of trouble. There is no one like him. Blessed be his name. Child of God, can we turn our Bibles to Psalm 46? And we are reading Psalm 46, verse 1 to verse 7. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Psalm 46, the verse 1 to 7. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with swelling thereof. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. Six, the hidden rage and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. Seven, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a glorious God. Dependable God. Reliable God. Child of God, do you know that truly God is our ever-present help in times of trouble? God is a God of his word. Everything he says in his word, that is the truth. That is who he is, child of God. The Bible says that he is our refuge. He is our strength. He is always ready to help us in time of trouble. God is always there. In the midst of our test, in the midst of our trial, in the midst of our temptation, God is an ever-present help. He is always there, beloved child of God. He is the God that is omnipresent. He knows he is he's, uh, the, he's everywhere at the same time. Beloved child of God, he is the God that knows it all. He is the God that sees it all. And so, whenever we find ourselves in the midst of test and trial, truly, God is always there. God is always there. And that's why the word of God tells us, even when earthquake comes, when the mountains crumble into the sea, child of God, God is there. Are you in the midst of an earthquake? Is the mountains crumbling around you? Beloved child of God, God is there. God is there. Just like he said, he is our ever present help. God is there, beloved child of God. He says, let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the water surge. Child of God, can you see that these things come? Can you see that the oceans will rage? Can you see that the mountains will quake? Can you see that earthquake will come? Can you see that mountains will crumble? But the Bible says that God is there. God is an ever-present help. God is there to help. That's the reason he is there. Beloved child of God. 
The Bible says a river brings joy to the city of our Lord, the sacred home of the Most High. Beloved child of God, that river of life, the Holy Spirit, the helper is there to bring us that peace, even in the midst of our storms and our trial. He is always there. Beloved child of God, it doesn't matter what you are going through. God is there with you. God is there with you, child of God. We want to look at an example of his help even in the midst of test and trial. What a mighty God we serve. Beloved, everything that God says in his word is the truth. It is tested and proved over and over and over again. The word of God is perfect. The word of God has been refined over and over and has come out purer than silver and purer than gold. The word of God is truth. Beloved, let's turn our Bibles and learn something from the word of God. As we look at Genesis chapter 37, let's turn our Bible to Genesis 37. The word of God tells us that God is our ever-present help in time of trouble. Let us see how God helps, even in the midst of test, even in the midst of trial, even in the midst of trouble. We are reading Genesis chapter 37 from verse, 28, from verse, from verse 18 to 28, please. Genesis chapter 37. Sorry. Genesis 37, verse 18 to 28. 18 to 28. <clears throat> and when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit and we will say some evil beast has devoured him and we shall see what will become of his dreams and reuben heard it and he delivered him out of their hands and said let us not kill him and reuben said unto them shed no blood but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness and lay no hand upon him that he might that he might read him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it came to pass when Joseph was come into his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors and was that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with the camel, bearing spicy and balm and myrrh, and going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? 27. Come. Let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hands be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And the brethren were content. 28. Then, they, then there passed the Midianites merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph to Egypt. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Beloved child of God. The Bible says that God is our refuge and our strength. Always ready to help us in time of trouble. Beloved child of God. This child of God was in trouble. This is his time of trouble. This trouble came, in, came his way. Child of God, do you know the plan of the enemy? The Bible says that when Joseph's brother saw him coming, they recognized him in the distance. As he approached, they made plans to kill him. The plan of the enemy was to kill him. Beloved, it was death that was coming the way of Joseph. But the Bible says that God is our ever-present help. 
in time of trouble. The enemy meant death for him, but beloved child of God, do you know he didn't die? Do you know he didn't die? God manifested his help. Do you know how God manifested his help? The same ones that planned to kill him, child of God, the Holy Spirit began to walk upon their hearts. The Lord began to turn things around. They began to turn things around, child of God. God is our ever-present help. The enemy planned death for him, but child of God, the plan of the enemy did not come to pass. The plan of the enemy did not come to pass. The same way we can see he planned death for Jesus. But child of God, when it looked as if he had overcome, what happened in three days? Did Jesus not rise again? Indeed, God is our ever-present help. In time of trouble, there are times that the mountain is raging, the earth is quaking. Child of God, it was quaking in the life of Joseph. But can you see the word of God? That God is our ever-present help. In times of trouble, in times of trouble, beloved, do you think that it was the brothers that turned things around? No, it was the God of Joseph who is ever present to help him in his time of trouble that worked things out in his favor. That worked things out in his favor. And so in the same way, child of God, whatsoever you are going through, beloved, it may look as if, oh, why is it like this? Child of God, it looked like, why is it like this in the life of Joseph? But do you know that God was working everything out in the favor of Joseph? The same way, child of God, the word of God comes to you today to remind you that truly all things work together for good to them that love him, to them that are called according to his purpose. But Joseph was called according to the plan of God, according to the purpose of God. And so even in the midst of trouble, even when death was the plan of the enemy, beloved child of God, the one that sees it all, the one that is our ever present help, he sent Joseph help. That's the help of the father. Beloved, is that all? The Bible says that when in verse 24, it says, so when Joseph arrived, his brothers ripped him of his beautiful robe he was wearing. Then they grabbed him and threw him into the cistern. Now the cistern was empty. There was no water in it. Child of God, imagine that there was water in it. Do you know they would have still thrown Joseph in? But the Lord that is our ever-present help in time of trouble, make sure that that well is a dry well. Make sure that there is no water there that will kill Joseph. That is what God tells us. God is our ever-present help in times of trouble. Do you know that many of us, we don't see the help that God is rendering to us even in the midst of our storm? We don't see it and so we don't even appreciate him. We, we are grumbling, we are complaining, but in the midst of our problem, the help of God is manifesting in one way or the other. God is still proving himself faithful in the, even in the midst of our challenges. Child of God, it is good for us to truly give him thanks in all things. Why? Because even in the midst of that trouble, even in the midst of that earthquake, child of God, God is working things out in your favor. God is working things out in your favor. Let's learn from the life of Joseph. When that trouble was around him, beloved child of God, was it not Romans 8.28 that was being fulfilled in Joseph's life? Was it not all things that was working together for his good? Was he not being traded into the glorious inheritance that God has for him? Child of God, when he came on Lazarus and Lazarus died and Lazarus was in the grave, was that the end of Lazarus? Was it not for Lazarus? Lazarus to fulfill his purpose by rising again so that his life will be an example for me and you up till forever and so beloved child of God let us take God at his word that truly God is an ever present help in time of trouble if we may not see the end at that point but child of God in the midst of that trouble he is helping us 
In the midst of that trouble, he is helping us. The trouble came so much upon Joseph. But child of God, do you know that even when he was in the pit, even when he was in the cistern, even when he was in the well, God made sure that the ones to take him to his destiny will come. God did not allow him to sleep in that pit, child of God. The Lord sent him help to take him to the place of his destiny. And so, beloved child of God, whatsoever you are going through, wipe your tears, look around that situation and see how it's connected to your destiny. And see how it's taking you to the glorious future that the master has for you. See how it's taking you. God is our ever-present help. He has already told us that there are times that earthquake will come. There are times that mountains will shake. There are times that the sea will roll. But beloved child of God, he said he is our ever-present help. He is our ever-present help. So, no matter what you are going through, reach out and receive the help of God. Receive the help of God. He is with you even in that pit. He is with you. Even when the enemy planned for your life, he is the one that is delivering you. Beloved child of God, let's see beyond today and look into the glorious future that the master has for us. And let's paint a picture of our future so that we will know how to walk with him in agreement. So that we will know how to walk with him in agreement. Because anything that God permits to come our way, as long as we are in the will of the Father, as long as child of God, we are where God wants us to be. Beloved, it is only to take us to a glorious destiny. It's only to prepare us and equip us for what God has for us, child of God. That's why the Bible says clearly to us that even in the midst of that storm, a river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in the city. It cannot be destroyed. God will never allow you to be destroyed, child of God. He will never allow you to be destroyed. The Bible says from the very break of day, God will protect it. And that is where many of us are. In the midst of that trouble is the protection of God. In the midst of that trouble is the help of God. In the midst of that trouble is the favor of God. Can you see the favor that surrounded Joseph even in the midst of his test and trial? Can you see that there was no water in the well? That is the favor of God. Can you see, child of God, that when they wanted to kill him, beloved child of God, God turned it around. That is the help of God. Can you see that even when the Egyptians came, it was all working together for his good because it was to take him to the land where he would reign as a king. All things work together for you, child of God. All things is working together for your good, beloved. Don't allow the enemy to make you feel as if your God has left you. God never leaves us. He said he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And so even in the midst of our trouble, God is our ever-present help. Ever-present help in the midst of trouble. Ever-present help in our test and in our trial. That is who he is. Ever-present. Ever-present help. And so child of God, you are never alone. He has never left you. Some of us are crying, oh my God has forsaken me. God has not forsaken you. Beloved child of God, it is working for your good. Look for the good in that situation and thank him for his favor and thank him for his mercy and thank him for his marvelous help. Why? All things work together for good. It's working together for good, beloved child of God. Then God allowed them to come and take him to the land of his glorious inheritance. But beloved child of God, at that point, did it look as if he was going to the land of his glorious inheritance? Child of God, the same way you look around and everything around you is looking as if there is no hope. Beloved, there is a glorious inheritance ahead. There is a glorious future ahead. There is a beautiful beginning for you again at, uh, ahead. God can still make that way, even though he looks as if there is no way. God will make a way for you. And so, beloved child of God, take courage in the Lord. Believe him for his, his word because he says that the nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. 
His voice thunders and the earth melts. Whatsoever you are going through, the voice of God, the one whose voice can settle the whole world, child of God, the voice of God is more than enough for your situation. The voice that of the Holy Spirit in the midst of your storm, that is where you need to focus your attention. That is where we need to look at. Beloved child of God, there is a voice. There is a voice in the midst of our test and our trial. The voice of the Holy Spirit. It's not time for us to shut down that voice. Child of God, it's time for us to listen to that voice. Because the Bible says that it's the voice of the Lord that thunders and the earth melts. Do you think God did not speak to Joseph in the midst of his test and trial? Child of God, his presence has a voice. His glorious presence with us in the midst of test and trial is speaking. Let us listen to that voice. Let's not allow the voice of the adversary to swallow the voice of the Holy Spirit in our life. Why? God is our ever-present help. He's there to direct us. He's there to, to show us the way forward. I believe he was there ministering peace even to the heart of Joseph, even in the midst of what he was going through. I believe the Lord was telling him he was a man of dreams. So God will be talking to him and God will tell him, my child, is working together for your good beloved child of God let us learn the lesson let us learn the lesson why because God delivers us so much but because of the trouble around us we don't even acknowledge him we don't even see him instead of giving him thanks at that point imagine that Joseph who, who saw his future clearly don't you think that at that point what will he be doing he will be giving God thanks even in the midst of that crying, as this saying, Father, I thank you. Even as you are weeping, even as he's paining you, child of God, the word of God says, in all things, we should give him thanks. Why? It's working together for our good. It's working together for our good. Because God did not leave Joseph at that same level, beloved child of God. This is what happened to Joseph in some in Genesis chapter 45, and I am reading from verse 3 to 8. Beloved, this is the word of the Almighty God. Joseph, he says, I am Joseph, he said to his brothers. Is my father still alive? But his brothers were speech speechless. They were stunned to realize that Joseph was standing there in front of them. Please come closer, he said to them. So they came closer and he said again, I am Joseph. Your brother whom you sold into slavery in Egypt. But don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your life. This famine that has ravaged the land for two years will last five more years. And they will neither be plowing nor harvesting. God has sent me ahead of you to keep you and your families alive. And to preserve your many preserve many survivors so it is so and he is the one who made me an advisor to pharaoh the manager of his entire palace and the governor of all egypt beloved child of god does god put us to shame even when trouble comes our way child of god all things work together for good god is indeed an ever-present help in time of trouble beloved the brothers thought they had done away with him. But child of God, it was Joseph that said, I am Joseph, he said to his brothers. I am Joseph. Then his brothers were speechless. Child of God, they were stunned to realize that Joseph is still standing and he's standing in front of them as a prince. Beloved child of God, if Joseph did not go through his test and his trial, will he be standing as a prince? Beloved, he would have been standing in the same category with his brothers looking for food. But beloved child of God, God allowed that trouble to come his way to make him a prince. And so, stop questioning God. Give him thanks. Because in the midst of your test and your trial, you will not fall. You will not be ashamed. He will not disappoint you. The, your enemies will still meet you standing. Child of God, that is the God that we serve. That is the God that we serve. And so when he says it's our ever-present help in time of trouble. Beloved, there are times that we have to pass through trouble to get to the glorious end that God has for us. And so that trouble is not the end of the journey. 
That challenge is not your bus stop, beloved child of God. You will still stand and men will be amazed at your glory. Beloved child of God. God did it for Joseph. God did it for him, child of God. The ones that thought that he would be a dead man. Beloved child of God. He stood as a, as a prince. Why? God is our ever-present help in times of trouble. That is who he is, child of God. The Bible says he was the one telling his brother, come closer. He said to them, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery in Egypt. Yes, he went through slavery in Egypt. He went through that test. He went through that problem. But do you know that God is still, was still with him, an ever-present help. An ever-present help. Even as a houseboy, he was an ever-present to help to him. Even as a prisoner, God was an ever-present help. God is ever-present in all the seasons of our lives, child of God. He is ever-present, a covenant-keeping God. The God that says it and does it. The God that says he will never leave us, he will never forsake us. He is our ever-present help. And whatsoever he allows to come our way, child of God, there is a purpose for it. There is a purpose for it, child of God. When you read further, did Joseph not have a purpose? Did Joseph not have a purpose? Joseph said, it was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your life. God was sending him somewhere. But do you know that along that journey, God will allow things to happen in his life in order to prepare him for where he is taking him to. In order to prepare him for where he is taking him to. Beloved child of God, do you think that it was only Joseph's brothers that, that were misbehaving? Joseph was also, had those things inside him that God had to allow him to pass through that refining fire. To train and equip him, beloved child of God, so that he will not fail on in, in, in his assignment. And so, beloved child of God, that situation is to kill your flesh and to bring gold out of you. So allow the refining fire do his work. But know that child of God, what you cannot bear, he will never allow it to come your way. He will never allow it to come your way. Beloved, because the Bible clearly tells us that there is no temptation that is common to men. That there is no temptation that happens around us that is not common among men. And that when we are tempted, child of God, he will always provide a way of escape. And so, child of God, even in the midst of that trial, he has promised us that he will not allow us to, to be tempted beyond what we can bear. And so, even that trouble comes because he knows that we can bear it. And so, child of God, let's bear it. But let us make sure that we don't desert him in the midst of our test and trial. Let's still hold on very tight to him. Let's still hold on very tight to him. Because he is the God of the valley. He is the God of the mountaintop. Joseph was in the valley. He was his God. And so, even when most Joseph got to the mountaintop, child of God, he was with him in the valley. He was with him in the mountaintop. Don't drop your God because of the valley that you are going through. Beloved, hold on tight to him. Why? You will get to the mountaintop. You will get to the mountaintop. You need his voice. You need his direction. Child of God, don't close your ears to the voice of God. Because the moment you close your voice to the voice of God, child of God, the voice of the enemy will swallow you up. And so, child of God, reach out your hand. Believe him. He say he is our ever present help. Truly, that is who he is. Did he not help Joseph? If he helped Joseph, he will help you, child of God. Did he leave Joseph? He never left Joseph. But did Joseph go through test and trial? Yes, Joseph went through test and, and, test and trial. But through it all, God was his ever-present help. God is our ever-present help, beloved child of God. He's our ever-present help. Beloved, we want to look at God's word to us. In Isaiah chapter 49, child of God, we are reading Isaiah 49 from verse 24. To 26 Isaiah 49 from verse 24 to 26 blessed be the name of the Lord what a mighty God we serve Isaiah 49 from verse 26 Isaiah 49 from verse 24 to 26 okay Isaiah 49 the verse 24 to 46 to 26 26 i'm sorry shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered 
But that says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with you, and I will save thy children. 26. I will feed them that oppress thee with thine own flesh, and they shall be drunken with thy own blood. So as with sweet wine, and all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Child of God, don't forget that God is your ever-present help. God is my ever-present help. God is our ever-present help in time of trouble. Beloved child of God, this is the word of the Lord. He say, how who can snatch the plunder of war from the hands of the warrior? Even when the plunder is, if even when, child of God, the, the warrior is holding you, even when the enemy is holding you tight, child of God, this is the question of the Lord. Who can snatch, child of God, the plunder of war from the hands of a warrior? Can he not snatch us? Can he not snatch us? It does not matter how tight the enemy is holding you, beloved child of God. God is our ever-present help. In time of trouble, he said, who can demand that a tyrant let his captives go? Child of God, he is the God that is our ever-present help that can demand that tyrants should let us go. Child of God. He is our ever-present help that has said to us clearly that captives of the warriors will be released. That even when the warriors have held us captive, he is our ever-present help to release us from that captivity. Beloved child of God, the Bible says that I will fight those that fight you. He is our ever-present help to fight for us. He is our ever-present help to contend for us. He is our man of war, child of God. Beloved child of God, he is our ever-present help to feed our enemies with their own flesh. To cause our enemies to drink their own blood, not our own blood. He is our ever-present help. And so, child of God, don't say that your own situation is different. Beloved child of God, it is still the devil. It's still the devil. At every level, is still the devil, beloved child of God, that is fight, that is that is holding us or, or fighting us in one way or the other. And child of God, on the cross of Calvary, Jesus has already finished that battle. And so you can't say that your case is different. Beloved, if the captive, if the wicked is holding you captive, beloved child of God, he has said it, that he is your ever-present help. He is my ever-present help. He is our ever-present help to contend and to fight for us. Why? So that at that end, his name will be glorified. Was the name of the Lord not glorified in the life of his son, Joseph, child of God? Was the name of the Lord not glorified? Can we turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 49? Child of God, look at Genesis 49. Genesis 49. And we are reading Psalm 20, uh, verse 22 to verse 26, please. Genesis 49, verse 22 to 46. <laughs> Let me help you, please. Genesis 49 from verse 22 to 26. This is the word of the Lord. Joseph is the fall of a wild donkey. The fall of a wild donkey at a spring. One of the wild donkeys on the ridge. Achaz attacked him savagely. They shot at him and harassed him. But his bow remained taunt and his arms were strengthened by the hand of of the mighty one of Jacob, by the shepherd of the rock of Israel. May the God of your fathers help you. May the Almighty bless you with the blessings of the heavens above, the blessings of the watery de depths below, the blessings of the breast and the womb. May my fatherly blessings on you surpass the blessings of my ancestors, reaching out of to the heights of the eternal hills. May the blessings rest on the head of Joseph, who is prince among his brothers. Beloved child of God, it doesn't matter what the enemy shoots at you. 
child of God, when that arrow came against Joseph, beloved child of God, when the enemy came to taunt him in different ways, child of God, when the kingdom of darkness fought against him, beloved, what happened to him? The Bible tells us that the hand of the mighty one of Jacob, the shepherd, the rock of Israel, was the one fighting for him, was the one giving him strength. And so, beloved child of God, that mighty hand of God is still stretched out to work things out for you. That mighty hand of God is still working behind the scenes. Beloved child of God, the grace of God upon your life is more than enough to take you through the test and trial that you are going through. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is working with you. Beloved, that was the secret of Joseph. When he went through the challenges he went through, it was the strength of the Almighty God. God. It was the hand of the mighty one of Israel. It was the God of Jacob that fought the battle for him. Child of God, he did not disconnect from his God. That was the source of his strength and beloved child of God. The Bible says, may the God of your fathers help you and may the Almighty bless you with the blessings of the heavens above, blessings of the watery depths below and blessings of the breast and the womb. Child of God, these are the blessings that waits upon you every moment of your life. These are the things that Jesus has already released unto us. That in the midst of our test, in the midst of our trial, the blessing is there. The help of God is there. Beloved child of God, the grace of God is there. The favor of God is there. The blessings of the Most High God is in our midst. Even when we go through that test and trial. In order to keep us, equip us, enable us to enter the glorious destiny that he has for us. And so child of God, the fatherly blessings of God is upon us. The help of the Holy Spirit is upon us. Beloved, whatsoever he has allowed to come upon us, beloved is the blessing, is the grace of God, is the help of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, child of God, do you know that our freedom is tied to the knowledge of God that we have inside us? The word of God tells us that we will know the truth and the truth shall set us free. But so ever you are going through, child of God, know the truth. The truth, Jesus is the truth. He said he is the truth. He is the, he is the truth. He is the way. He is the life. Child of God, Jesus is the word of God. Whatsoever you are going through, Dwell on the truth because it will take the truth to set you free. Don't allow the enemy to fill you with his lies. The truth. And so our freedom is tied to the truth that we know. Child of God, Joseph was able to overcome. Why? The truth was with him. And beloved, the truth is near you. Why not stretch out even in your weakness and find strength in the word of God and find life in his word. Beloved child of God, he has something to say. And he has been saying it. Pay attention, child of God. Don't allow grief to blow your sight. Don't allow grief to swallow your voice. Don't allow your grief to stop you from reaching out to the grace that is available unto you. Child of God, arise and shine again. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Know that truth. Know that truth. Know that truth. Beloved child of God, we will know, we, we will know him. And beloved as we know him, beloved child of God, we will testify. Let us learn something from the life of, of Peter in Matthew chapter 14. Beloved, this is the word of the almighty God. I am reading Matthew chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 28 to 24. This is the word of God to me and you, beloved. The Bible says, then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, let me come to you. Waiting, uh, walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sing. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed into the boat, the wind stopped. Stopped. Child of God, what is happening in that place? Peter called out to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the waters. Child of God, reach out your hands. You also, like Peter, is able to say in the midst of your storm, Jesus, if it's really you, then let me walk on the storm. 
Walk on that storm. Walk on that storm. And child of God, as you walk on that storm, fix your gaze on him. Because Peter was walking on that storm until he looked away from Jesus. And when he looked away from Jesus, what happened to him? He began to sink. And so, beloved child of God, it is the will of the Father that our gaze is upon him. Child of God, that our gaze is upon him. I read from Matthew chapter 14 from verse 24 to 26. Let our gaze be upon the Lord. Let our gaze be upon, to 32 I read, sorry. Let our gaze be upon the Lord, beloved child of God. Don't lose sight of him. Even in the midst of that storm, we can see that the moment Peter looked away from him, what happened? He started to sink. And Jesus has a, a word for us, even in our, our storm. Why did you doubt me? Why are you looking? Looking away from me, child of God. When we look up to Him, we will live. And so, beloved child of God, that situation that came like a storm that wants to make us to sink, don't agree with the enemy to sink. Look up to Him, you can walk on that storm. Look up to Him, you will testify. Look up to Him, you will, you will, you will, you will give Him the praise. Child of God, look up to Him, you will never be ashamed. And so, learn from Peter. Peter was walking, child of God, as long as our eyes are upon him, we will walk to the end, very end. And child of God, if we are sinking, we can cry out again to him. And can you see our ever-present help in time of trouble? When the storm came, our ever-present help was still there. And so he's still standing there, child of God. Why not stretch out your hands? Why not stretch out your hands and rise up again? He pulled Peter up. Rise up again and walk upon the storm. Because child of God, they did not end on the water. They got to the expected end. They got to the expected end. And the glory of God was seen. Child of God, if it didn't happen, will we know that this victory lies ahead for us? God allowed it to happen so that his name will be glorified. And so beloved child of God, whatsoever you are going through, don't forget that God is our ever-present help in time of trouble. The word of God tells us in Psalm 34 verse 5, this is the word of the Almighty God. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. That's the word of the Lord. Let's look up to him. As we look up to him, he has already promised that, that shame, disgrace will never be on our face. And child of God, look up to him today and you will testify. Look up to him and you will glorify him again. Is that all? He also said to us in Psalm 16 and I read verse 8. This is the word of the almighty God. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken for his right beside me. Beloved, can you see again that God is our ever present help. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. When the storm came, his disciples were, ro were, were, were struggling. Child of God, was he not an ever present help? And here also, the word of God tells us in that Psalm 16 verse, verse 8, it says, I know the Lord is always with me. Child of God, do you know that the Lord is always with you? Do you know he's always with you? And if you know that he's always with you, then stop saying that my God has forsaken me. He cannot forsake us. He is always with us. It doesn't matter the wind that is blowing around us. He has never left us. And so he says, I know the Lord is always with me. It means that it's important that we know he is with us. Because when we know he is with us, then we know that victory is with us. Then we know that favor is with us. Then we know that divine provision is with us. Why? In his presence is fullness of joy. Then we'll know that peace is with us. Then we'll know that victory is with us. Then we'll know that dominion is with us. Beloved child of God, this is the word of the Lord. He says, I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken. When we know that he is with us, do you know we will not be shaken? Do you know we will not be shaken? He says, for he's right beside me. And so, child of God, the Lord wants you to know that he's right beside you. Stretch your hands and receive strength from him. Stretch your hands and receive your grace from him. Stretch your hands, receive your encouragement from him. Stretch your hands, receive your hope from him. Why? You will rise again. You will testify again. You will glorify his name. Beloved, make sure that heaven is proud of you. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give God all the glory. We give God all the honor. We give God all the adoration. We thank His Majesty. We worship Him of glory. We thank Him that He is our ever present help. We thank Him that He never leaves us. We thank Him that He never leaves us. We thank you that I can have no cry out the honor. Thank you, Father, because you are our ever present help. Thank you because you never leave us. Thank you because you never forsake us. Let us ask for grace to stretch our hands unto Him and receive everything. Let us receive the grace to take him at his word, to take him at his word, to take him at his word. Receive the grace to take him at his word. Ako sata yaka deba leke debo zete yaka masheke deba santa. Let us pray that nothing will separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Not even the trouble that we are going through. Oh, mako sata ya leke deba ba leke debo shoto yeke deba ba. Raka sente ya, give him the glory. Makode bazanta, yeke rebo shete ya.